Welcome to 2024. These are my top 10 videos and home remedies of 2023. The exact regimen of Panicure for Cancer. Three remedies for dental care without brushing. A brand new flea and tick spray recipe. Top three OTC meds for pets. The most important benefits of melatonin for our dogs and cats. The best dog ear infection remedies. A brand new and effective skin tumor paste. Three new allergy holistic solutions. The new mysterious respiratory illness in dogs. These are the top natural treatments. And lastly, my brand new anti-itch homemade cream. Your dog, your cat, they have cancer. What are the suggested doses and regimen of Panicure for Cancer? First of all, the high dose. So for this liquid Panicure here, it comes from the clinic. Each one cc or one mil of the Panicure that is 100 milligrams. Meaning two are getting 500 milligrams, that would be five cc's. But Panicure comes in other forms. There's the Panicure C, you can get as these granules or the capsules, it comes in a little pouch easy to get online. Each of those packets is has 222 milligrams of Panicure. So you would need two of those packets daily. I do three days on, four days off. I would do that for 30 to 60 days and assess if she's responding or not. If she, and if she responded to that regimen, I would just stay on that. Your dog needs dental care, but they just won't let you do anything in their mouth. You can't use a toothbrush. You can't use a scaler. Number one, aloe vera. I'm gonna be able to just rub this gel all along the edge of Tula's teeth and her gum line. Number two, coconut oil. And give it at least 60 days before you can assess like whether it's being beneficial or not. Ugh. Three is bee glue, also known as propolis. Fleas, ticks. This is a new natural flea and tick spray recipe. Our non-alcoholic witch hazel extract. We're putting in a half a cup, our liquid coconut oil, 60 mils, which is a quarter of a cup or four tablespoons. Next are awesome, although it's smelly, plant-based insecticide oil, the neem oil. You first gotta heat the neem up to turn it from a solid state into a liquid state. So I stuck it in a little cup of hot water and now it's a liquid and ready to go. We're putting in three mils, which is three droppers fulls. Each dropper full is one mil. Number four, a very effective insecticidal essential oil. This is cedarwood oil. We're putting in 10 drops of the cedarwood oil. This is lavender essential oil. 10 drops of the lavender essential oil. Pour that into your spray bottle. You can safely spray your dog three times a week. For cats, just once a week. What over-the-counter human medications do I use on my pets? Number one, for dogs that are nauseous, they eat something they shouldn't have, or a cat suffering from renal failure. This is the antacid famonidine, the brand Pepsid. We're looking at a pretty typical dog and cat dose of 2.5 milligrams per 10 pounds of body weight two to three times a day. So that would equate to a quarter of this 10 milligram tablet two to three times a day. Blech. Vomiting, pretty common call. I would have gone on an emergency. Doc, my dog's vomiting. Is there something at home that's safe to give? This is Gravol, the name of the drug, Diamond Hydronate. Standard dog and cat dose is 12.5 milligrams for 10 pounds of body weight two to three times a day. And that would equate to a quarter of this 50 milligram tablet. As recently as a few days ago, my brother's cat, explosive diarrhea. And he's asking like, is there something I can give my cat at home? The drug that I found in practice to be most effective is this drug. It's loperamide. The brand name is Imodium. The one big caveat for dog owners is some dogs have a genetic mutation called the MDR1 gene mutation. The general adage I followed in veterinary practice is white feet don't treat. I was just going on the low end of those. We're looking at 0.1 milligrams per kilo meaning a 10 pound dog or cat, they're about five kilos, they would be getting 0.5 of a milligram. These are two milligram capsules. That means your dog or cat would be getting a quarter of this capsule two to three times a day. Super important benefit of the sleep hormone, melatonin for pets. So we know that melatonin plays a key role in the hair growth cycle. In animals that are on melatonin, some of them appear to shed less. Cushing's disease. In Cushing's disease, also known as hyperadrenal corticism, most of these dogs have a pituitary tumor, generally it's benign. It's causing their adrenal gland to secrete far too much cortisol. One home remedy to consider which seems to be effective for many dogs, it's this, melatonin. Eye diseases of our animals, specifically, dry eye. One study in particular, it showed that with dry eye, melatonin, it increased tear production. Last but not least, the critical importance of melatonin for cancer. General dose is about one milligram of melatonin per 10 pounds of body weight once or twice daily. Dogs with ear infections. 
I get more questions about this than just about anything else. First, for mild dog ear infections where there's just moderate inflammation, moderate discharge, I would suggest this one. This is witch hazel with aloe. Number two, if your dog has a more established ear infection, there's more inflammation, there's more head shaking, there's far more discharge, we want a stronger remedy. This is an OTC combination remedy. First, we have caniston. The name of the drug is clotrimazole. And this is the most common antifungal that is in most veterinary ear medications. Then we have 1% hydrocortisone. Most of the veterinary ear medications, they have some form of corticosteroid to take down the inflammation. And then last but not least, we have an antibacterial. For this, we're going to be using polysporin, which has polymyxin and gramicidin. So what we're doing here is making an over-the-counter combination cream similar to the veterinary ear medications. Caniston, or the clotrimazole, one teaspoon. 1% hydrocortisone, one teaspoon. Polysporin, one teaspoon. Skin tumors in our pets, they are so, so common. Number five, this is our anti-cancer paste. The first part, it includes the medicinal mushroom chaga. It's considered the most potent antioxidant that we have today. We have the healing oil castor oil. It is a great topical anti-inflammatory. Lastly, the medicinal oil from Asia, this is the neem oil. It's got some great skin support properties and in particular, anti-cancer properties. To start, we're taking one tablespoon of the chaga, then add in 60 mils or a quarter teaspoon of boiling water. I'm gonna mix it, let that sit and steep for about 20 minutes. Transfer that chaga powder blend to a bowl. One teaspoon of the castor oil. Last but not least, one teaspoon of the neem oil. Mix your paste well. Apply this poultice directly over top of that tumor. Imagine Tula has it on the front of her leg. It's nice and thick. Look at that, fully covering that mast cell tumor. Then when you get yourself something like this sticky bandage of this vet wrap, wrap that over top of that tumor in your chaga poultice. Leave this on overnight for at least eight to 12 hours and then change it again. So you have a dog with atopy or environmental allergy. You've tried all these other remedies and nothing else has worked. Number one, vitamin D3. It's found in this cod liver oil. Each capsule has about 400 IUs of vitamin D. So I suggest a good standard dog dose, a quarter of a thousand milligram capsule per 20 pounds body weight daily. Number two, this is bee glue, also known as propolis. The oral dose of propolis is 100 milligrams per 10 pounds of body weight daily. These are 500 milligram capsules. I will be giving little Tula half a capsule once a day. This is a hormone that I've talked a lot about, but never in the context of allergy. This, this is the sleep hormone, melatonin. It's also immune modulary. Melatonin can modulate that immune system. So pretty standard dog dose, one milligram of melatonin per 10 pounds of body weight to a maximum of six milligrams. Typically we're giving this about one hour before bedtime. There's a potentially fatal mystery illness spreading in dogs right now in the US. It all starts with a cough. Number one, green tea. Here we have one cup. It is sit steeped and cool for 20 minutes. Adding to the green tea, we have this. This is local unpasteurized honey. I'm adding in one tablespoon. This here, slippery elm. Standard dog dose, 200 milligrams per 10 pounds of body weight, twice daily. But you need to break it open for it to actually be effective. And I want to show you with the powder here. Then what I'd be doing, I'd be mixing the slippery elm in here with the green tea, the honey mixture. And this is what I'd be giving to my dog. Standard dog dose, a quarter of a cup or 60 mils for 25 pounds of body weight twice daily. You have a dog or cat with red itchy skin. This is a new topical DIY natural anti-itch skin remedy. And it works so well. Number one, we have the coconut oil. We're gonna be using three tablespoons. Next, we have our anti-inflammatory castor oil. Two tablespoons of our castor oil. Third, this is sunflower oil. Two tablespoons. Oil number four, shea butter. One tablespoon. Number five, our beeswax. Two tablespoons of the pre-chipped beeswax. Put it on the stove at medium heat. You want it to have the ingredients just fully melt, but you don't want it to boil. As soon as they're all melted, then remove it from the stove. We're left with this yellowy liquid. It's been about 15 minutes. I've let the liquid cool down. Next, it's gonna go into our glass mason jars. We're gonna let this cool in the fridge. After it's fully cooled and set, this is how it should look. If you have an itchy dog, an itchy cat, I encourage you to try it. Thanks so much for watching this edition of Energy Secrets of the top 10 videos and home remedies of 2023.
click up there to subscribe, hit the bell to sign up for notifications, and when you click that link directly in the box below, I can send you a copy of my free book.